Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams, and our focus this morning will begin on an organization that's mission is to inspire philanthropy, strength in communities now and for future generations. I'm referring to the Greater Milwaukee Foundation, which is celebrating 100 years of generosity in the community. My first guest is Katherine Dunn. She's the Vice President for Community Investment at the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. Good morning, Katherine. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. And I think that right off the top, we should have you tell us more about the Greater Milwaukee Foundation and what it is that you do. Sure, I'd be happy to. And thank you so much for having us. We're My really pleasure. Excited. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation is a community foundation and we're one of uh, hundreds across the country that are designed to really provide an endowment to serve the community now and then for future generations. Mm -hmm. So we help donors um, create funds that serve uh, their interests in preserving community assets or helping serve communities most critical needs um, through grant making. Okay. So we really work with a variety of philanthropists and help them deploy their resources into the community. Sounds good and I think that all of the viewers at home who were not aware of the great things that you're doing are going to definitely walk away saying hey I definitely have to be a part of what they're doing. Oliver C. Fuller introduced the idea to mm -hmm. the Milwaukee community back in 1915 and your first major public donor was Patrick Cudahy. Mm -hmm. He donated $25,000 and is it amazing like a hundred years later you've got uh, Mr. Fuller's vision still intact? It, it really is, and it really speaks volumes to the model and also just the spirit behind the model mm -hmm. in allowing people to come together and invest in their community through an endowment. Yeah. And um, so that original gift has grown tremendously, and it's allowed us to give a lot of money back into the community through scholarships and grants to nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, you have been celebrating your centennial yes, all have. year long mm -hmm. with free gifts to the community, which I think is really special in the sense that uh, you do a lot to make a difference throughout the year, but you're still going that extra mile to give back to the community. So if you would tell us more about the concept behind that. Sure. Well, you know, um, you only reach this kind of milestone once in a hundred years, and so we tried to identify several ways that would lift up not only the foundation, but really the generosity of our donors mm -hmm. and the wonderful assets we have in this community and across the region. Yeah. So um, we borrowed from some other community foundations as well that had celebrated a year before us and um, developed a series of monthly gifts that were gonna be announced as a surprise, and now we're at the 12th and final month. Um, and it really has turned out to be a great way to just um, give people an opportunity to access and experience cultural organizations, historical organizations, and the things that make this region very special and very unique. Yeah, and that is what it's all about because uh, along the way you've been, uh, like you said, given these surprise announcements and people are able to take advantage of it. And what that does is, in many instances, is uh, open up the doors to an establishment or an organization that's here in the city that someone may not have been aware of. That's right. In fact, we have got and such fabulous heartfelt thanks from people from the community who came out to places like the Public Museum who mm -hmm. although they do have some free days they are they often do have a fee associated with them and so people were able to bring out their whole families and experience a day together walking through the museum and just really experiencing cultural organizations that some people may have thought well that's not for me but now I'm gonna go check it out mm -hmm. And so it's really been rewarding to create that theme of access and opportunity across all the great places that we've been visiting throughout the year through the Centennial Gift. Okay, and so you mentioned the Public Museum. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other gifts that you've given away along the, the whole year? So the Public Museum was our first, okay. and um, it was a weekend of free access. And um, the theme has been really around arts and culture, so we've done the um, Art Museum, mm -hmm. and they were under a renovation process at the time, but they had the Ebony Fashion Fair exhibit there, and Which so we had a great turnout. Wonderful, yes. Yeah, it was fabulous. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Um, we also provided a free day of transit across all of the systems in our four counties, so not just county-run systems, but also small city taxi services, mm -hmm. for example, in some of our outlying communities. Um, we did a free day, a free weekend at the domes, and 27,000 people came out to our domes to experience them. Um, 
And we've done the nature centers that are out across the region. Mm -hmm. We've done um, 10 Chimneys Foundation, which is the uh, um, one of the homes of uh, Linda and Fontaine, um, who are famous actors. Um, and then also uh, the Museum of Wisconsin Art in uh, West Bend and the Cedarburg Art Museum. So really also trying to get people from the city to go out and experience some of these fabulous regional gems mm -hmm. we have. Um, we did, of course, the acquisition of two snow leopards for the Milwaukee County Zoo, yes. which was very fun. Um, we provided a concert for veterans on the VA grounds with the Milwaukee Symphony, which was really touching and well received by our vets. Mm -hmm. And I remember you did something in Washington Park as well. Yeah. Yep. So related to that gift, we also did a free concert in Washington Park yeah. for the community to come out and, and experience the symphony and uh, sort of a Fourth of July celebration. Um, Discovery World was there in October with uh, a free weekend of Discovery World. Um, and then, of course, our most recent one was a free day at the Holiday Folk Fair International where 18,000 people came out on a Sunday afternoon to experience all the fabulous cultural and ethnic groups we have in our community who come out and celebrate during the folk fair. And that is what Milwaukee's famous mm -hmm. for, right? So I, I'm just really amazed, just so you know, that you remembered all of that. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And you did mention uh, that you had uh, announced that the zoo would be a part of your free gifts mm -hmm. uh, as far as acquiring the two snow leopards. There's mm -hmm. Asa and then there's the other snow leopard who's on its way from Switzerland, which is right. huge. But your last and final gift for the month of December, drum roll please. <laughs> so uh, we are really excited because we're providing a free week of access to the Milwaukee County Zoo and it's mm -hmm. an all access which means everything from parking to entry is covered. Um, and people can come out and experience uh, just some great activities that are going to be specially designed for that week, including ice sculptures and some educational activities and animal enrichment activities. Mm -hmm. But it was also uh, when Asa, the first of the two snow leopards, is going to be on exhibit for the first time for the public, and people can come out and meet him. He's adorable. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see the female from when she comes from Zurich. But um, we're really excited because I think that this is a time of year when families are home together mm -hmm. and they have an opportunity to go out and visit the zoo um, on one of those days or all of the days. So it, it will be available from December 26th all the way through December 31st. The zoo is extending its hours as well, so it'll be 9.30 to 4.30 every day. Okay, good stuff, and you're absolutely right. It's perfect timing because mm -hmm. the kids are on break, uh, a lot of the parents are on vacation, yeah. and uh, it's a great reminder to everybody that the Milwaukee County Zoo is open all year yes. long, you know? Yep. There are a lot of animals who love the heat, but there are a lot of them there that love the uh, cold as well, mm -hmm. including little Asa, who by name is a snow leopard, so let's hope uh, he can get some snow. <laughs> I hope he's out, and yeah, I hope there's a little snow for him, but I hope he's out and people get to visit him. Yeah, so uh, when you made this acquisition to bring the snow leopards, uh, what, what were you thinking as far as uh, that particular gift was concerned? So we, um, uh, many of the gifts had been sort of one day experiences or a weekend of free access mm -hmm. and, and that's really important, but we also wanted to identify ways to provide a lasting gift um, so that families can come out more than once and experience. And when we looked around and we um, identified different partners that we've been working with, we really thought that the zoo was a great place to start with and to see if there were animals that they had on a list that they were hoping to acquire and that we could somehow help with that. Mm -hmm. And when the um, opportunity to acquire the snow leopards came up, we thought it was just a perfect fit because, you know, they'll be here for years and people can come out and experience them and enjoy them time after time. And so. watch them grow. And Absolutely. watch them grow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. So with the uh, 100th year celebration, you do have a book where you've compiled all of the great history mm -hmm. of the Greater Milwaukee Foundation and people can get their hands on this book uh, for free. So another gift to the community. <laughs> so how would they in fact uh, get one of these books? So we have a limited number of these available. We, we um, produced it specifically to uh, recognize our donors as well as just the different milestones throughout our history. And if people are interested, they can contact us at the Greater Milwaukee Foundation's offices and we can 
help them get their hands on one. Yeah, it's awesome. Coffee table book, mm -hmm. uh, definitely one of those things that uh, people can pick up and just be reminded of the rich history that's right here in this city. Yeah. That's for sure. I uh, wanted to talk about some of your grant making and leadership projects before we run out of time. Sure. There are some specific things that the Greater Milwaukee Foundation addresses and it's majorly uh, things that you look at as critical issues and you actually mm -hmm. research to find out what those issues are. Tell us a little bit about that. So um, we have uh, uh, provided some leadership and are serving as part of leadership in a number of different areas and that really have been identified as critical issues facing our community. Mm -hmm. Um, we have our own research uh, that we commission in-house. We also certainly pay attention to a lot of the great research institutions we have here in our community. Not surprising, education time and time comes up um, as being one of the most critical issues, both from kids who are currently in school and their achievement uh, uh, gaps that mm -hmm. we experience, particularly around race and ethnic lines but um, also in the business community because that's the future workforce. And so there's a lot of concern about educational outcomes in our community. Mm -hmm. um, in response to that, we uh, helped start Milwaukee Succeeds, which is a very broad-based table of uh, business and civic and education leaders who are working together to try and change some of the um, negative things that you hear about education across our entire ecosystem, so it's our public schools, our private schools, charter choice, yeah. and really trying to um, change the trajectory of uh, kiddos who are in our school system and really give them all the support they can get to be successful. That's truly special. And in addition to the gifts for the centennial celebration that you've been giving away, you've actually done what's called special places grants, mm -hmm. and we've got a little bit of time to find out about that. So I'd love to share that with you because uh, it's, just as exciting about the gifts to the community, but a little bit different um, in that we've been investing in large scale community spaces kinds mm -hmm. of projects in the four counties that we serve. In Milwaukee, for example, we uh, invested in a project called Milwaukee Plays. It's an effort to rebuild with community input um, 10 of the city's um, playgrounds that really need some upgrading. And so community residents are helping design the playgrounds in their community. They'll be part of the rebuilding process, and wow. um, so we invested in helping uh, do that as part of our centennial gift to again leave a created uh, create a lasting gift to the community to be able to enjoy. Yeah, that's really special, and you've got to take pride in being a part of an organization like this that uh, really makes such a huge difference in the community. I think everybody in our organization is really uh, loves their work that we do, and mm -hmm. we're blessed to be working with such generous donors in a community that really has so many fabulous assets that we are able to work in that environment is great. Yeah, so you have your Milwaukee Succeeds that you mentioned, mm -hmm. and then the racial equity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. You deal with neighborhoods, economic mm -hmm. inclusion, all those things, and I thought it was interesting. I was looking at your list of grants, uh, and all of these organizations have actually been on this show, so our viewers will be familiar. Uh, you gave $100,000 uh, to Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Milwaukee, $50,000 to MICA, Wisconsin, and $60,000 to Pearls for Teen Girls, and when I say that is just the tip, the very tip of the iceberg of all the different things that you do to really make a difference when it comes to uh, even these uh, grassroots organizations who have a purpose, you're helping them to extend and be able to do even more than what they're capable of doing when it comes to finances. We want to be a good partner in philanthropy with that. Well, with you're that certainly doing that. I thank you so much for coming by today and sharing all the great information and I would like to reiterate the details for this month's free community gift once again. The final gift and celebration of the Greater Milwaukee Foundation Centennial Celebration is a free week of admission and activities at the Milwaukee County Zoo December 26th through the 31st from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and on top of all that parking is absolutely free. That's thank right. you. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. you coming by. Catherine Dunn is the VP for Community Investment at the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. When we return to our Issues Milwaukee, we'll switch our focus to the Milwaukee County Zoo, which, as you've heard, is one of the country's finest zoological attractions that's open for business all year long. We'll find out more about what's going on at the zoo and how you can take advantage of the Greater Milwaukee Foundation's free gift to the community. We'll be right back.